This is Lian So from ScienceScribe and in this video we're going to look at how to interpret ionic formula. Before you go any further, you should be able to know how to write an ionic formula before you proceed. So say for example, you should know that if we give you the text sodium chloride, you should be able to look in the table of ions and look up Na plus and Cl minus. From that you should be able to write NaCl which is your ionic formula. You should also be comfortable with drawing the structures of ions as well and I've gone ahead and shown those there for you. But what does NaCl of the ionic formula actually tell us? Well it tells me that for every one Na plus I should have one Cl minus ion. In other words I could say that my sodium ions and chloride ions are in a one to one ratio. For this next part of the video I'm going to go ahead and represent my sodium plus ions as a single positively charged sphere and I'm going to represent my chloride ions as a negatively charged sphere. We're now going to look at the structure of sodium chloride. You see sodium chloride isn't made of just one sodium plus and one chloride minus ion. It's made of several of them. It's made of heaps of these in an alternating pattern. Remember that sodium plus is a cation because it's positively charged and chloride is an anion because it's negatively charged. This entire structure is held together by something called ionic bonding which is just the attraction between all those positive ions and all those negative ions. Note that this structure extends in all three dimensions as well, so I've added extra layers in front and in the back. At the end of the day though, the entire structure will have a ratio of one sodium plus to one chloride minus ion. Let's now look at another example with calcium fluoride. If I wanted to write the ionic formula for calcium fluoride, I'd see that it's made of calcium 2 plus and F minus ions. I also would have seen that I needed two sets of fluoride ions just so I could get all the positive and negative charges to balance out and cancel to zero. This means my formula ends up becoming CaF2. What does this formula tell us? Well it tells us that it's made of calcium cations and also fluoride ions. However, Note that because we needed two sets of fluorides, this means I needed two fluorides for every one calcium 2 plus. This means that I've got a ratio of one calcium 2 plus to every two F minus ions. Since calcium fluoride is also ionic, it means that we expect it to exist as a lattice as well.